This is Weekly Woman by Jubilance for PMS. Hi, Heather. Welcome. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Oh, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Yes, I have Heather Milstead, everyone. Um, And so where are you calling in from? Um, I'm calling in from a place called Harpenden, which is a tiny little town in Hertfordshire, kind of near Luton Airport way. So I'm just back from Edinburgh. Oh, okay. Oh, welcome back. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Um, What's your favourite part about Hertfordshire? Um, I like the countryside probably. It's there's a lot of like green spaces that you can go for walks and bike rides and like random fields just hiding behind houses, which is quite nice. So. Oh wow, that's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> the country girl at heart. So. Oh wow. Yeah, that's great to be in Edinburgh then. There's like so much um oh, nature there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's probably one of my favorite places like ed- ever. <laughs> yeah, I would move there in a heartbeat. It is gorgeous. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so you were just performing at the Edinburgh Fringe. Can you talk a little bit about what that is for our American view- viewers and listeners who have no idea? Absolutely. Um, so it's like this massive arts festival that happens every year up in Edinburgh. I think it started sort of post, like after the World Wars, when everyone needed a bit of cheering up as in sort of like a response to more like mainstream or sort of like higher like more difficult to access ways of performing I, it's uh, involves I mean I'm not a historian on the, I don't know why I'm talking about this uh, not the question anyway it's this massive arts festival in Edinburgh it happens every August um for like the whole month you've got comedy you've got dance you've got theatre you've got cabaret musicals things that don't fit into any of those categories um which is great because so many different artists come together from all over the world and there's sort of lots of different, you apply to the different venues and the venues just pop up in spaces that aren't normally theatre spaces. So you might have churches or university buildings or like random cellars or like archways. It's it's really cool. I love it. It's got a really brilliant atmosphere and energy to it, which is really cool. Wow, that's amazing. And I think here in America, everyone like aspires to go to the Edinburgh Fring- Fringe Festival with a show just once. Um, it's like the inspiration that everyone has. It's like the art festival like of English speaking countries. It is like considered amazing. So that is so cool that you perform there both before the pandemic and like going to be in 2020 and then now. And now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, the stuff of dreams that's really cool <laughs> yes so um my sister actually saw um heather's performance in uh at the edinburgh fringe this year and she called me and said oh my god you have to talk to her and so you had a show called period dramas and your tagline was what if period dramas really were about periods we warn you it gets bloody can you talk a little bit about what this show was yeah definitely um so period drama is sort of a cabaret comedy piece all about the history of menstruation so we went back from ancient Egypt and came all the way up to today and talked about periods and different periods of history um yeah it was a little bit chaotic a little bit crazy um and we had a different cabaret act for each period of history um so there was like a tap dance for the 1900s up to today and then a magic act for medieval Europe and stuff like that so yeah Wow. How did you come up with like the cabaret acts that went with the different periods of history? This is a great question. And it's a slightly random answer. Um, I think so. the show, actually, there's one act in it I do about Elizabeth I and this rumor that she was like, actually died when she was 10 and was replaced by this boy. And that's why she never got married. And But there was it, it was a rumor people believed at the time. And a lot wow. of it centered on like, yeah. And people like spied on her bed sheets and were like, is she bleeding? Is she? Like, it was really like bizarre and I I know so I find it so crazy so I made this sort of like gender bending drag act about it um which sort of ended with her period starting and that act has changed hugely um since I first made it but it's still in the show and then the rest of it kind of built from that so that was probably the first sort of cabaret-esque um hint but I will say um, started getting into cabaret and drag around the time I started making the show and it just felt like a I don't know cabaret is quite like a subversive art form when you get to do a lot with it and it's it's about pushing those boundaries and I mean talking about periods shouldn't be a boundary that needs to still be pushed but unfortunately it seems to be one um, and then like I just did all the research and from that 
that I was like, oh, that looks really interesting. I kept looking at that and I was like, oh, what have I actually worked well with this? And so like in the Victorian era, it's all about sort of people's morality and it's very uptight. And I thought oh, it'd be funny if I do like a tongue in cheek strip tease because that like plays on <laughs> the idea of the, the sort of morality of the time. So I tried to link each act, like each act kind of grew out of the history itself in a way. Wow, that's so know. fascinating. And and crazy that it is so subversive right now. And um, menstruation isn't typically shown in the theater or on film, even though it's like something that half of the population experiences yeah. at some point during their lifetime. Um, what inspired you to create this like this drama about like this taboo subject? Was it this Elizabeth the first um uh, uh, piece that you had started first on? Um, I think I'd kind of always kind of weirdly been quite interested in it. I think I, I have really bad periods, like they're oh. just so bad. And I started when I was nine. So uh, <gasps> like before I'd started watching period dramas and I thought period dramas were going to be about periods. And I was so disappointed that they were. <laughs> and oh. I, just, I know it's quite tragic really, but um, I was, I was so upset. So I'd always had this like, I don't know I didn't really get why we weren't supposed to talk about them or like why we couldn't talk about them and I so I always had that kind of part of me um and and then I went off to do history at uni before I went to drama school um and there was like nothing about the history of registration I was just so frustrated by it I was like right I want to do some research I want to find out some stuff because everyone like you read the sort of the first articles were like oh but nutrition was bad so people bled less I'm like that's not that's just that's not true <laughs> and not true <laughs> it's just like that's not that's not right um so I like I kind of wanted to start doing that research when I was in uni and started digging into it a bit but never really um did anything with it until sort of after drama school um but I think it had been something always playing in the back of my mind which is perhaps a bit weird but um it was something I always wanted to know more about because I was like it's so hard to deal with it now how much of it like how do people deal with it then? And I was just really interested in it. Um, yeah. That's some history nerd. Um, <laughs> no, that's so cool. That's so interesting. So you were able to use like your history background to put together this show, which is so interesting. And yeah. shouldn't be taboo. <laughs> no, I know it's uh, absolutely ridiculous that it's still. And when I was flying, like in Edinburgh, oh my gosh, the conversations that like some people were just like. Like some people turned around and was like, you've got a man with me. And I was like, yeah, and we can talk about periods. <laughs> um, like people were, some people were wonderful and some people just weren't ready to like talk about it, which uh, perhaps I'm naive because I'm the one that's written the show, but I, more more so than I expected. Um, but wow. That so that's yeah. so interesting here in like 2022. And it's still something that is like, yeah. oh, um, especially because so let's talk about your poster. Your poster is you with a tampon in your nose, like the classic like nosebleed thing. And then you have um, a crown made out of tampons. Can you talk a little bit about like putting that together? Um, so the crown actually came first. I I think because the idea of a period job is it was quite sort of initially quite regal and it does end up being a history of there are quite a few monarchs that feature in it which is something that I wanted to have more of a general experience of everyday people but unfortunately there sometimes is more there are more resources available for for like monarchs and stuff and um, mm -hmm. I, I want to do more research uh, going forward on that anyway sorry sidetrack <laughs> the crowd so I guess there was this sort of um regal part of it and because it started with Elizabeth the first and I was like oh it'd be fun if we had a crown and then I was just sort of in an R&D like research and development phase with my director at the time and we were like oh let's make a crown of tampons and we literally whacked out this red crown went to the shop and were like okay what do you want to do and just built the crown of tampons um and that sort of became a like centerpiece of the show at the end and the tampon up the nose actually came later when we were playing with different um ideas for photos we initially kind of wanted to do something like on the toilet um but that shot just ended up being the one that when we looked back at all of them that was sort of a last minute end of the day of the photo shoot let's shove a top of the nose put the crown on see what happens and oh. when we looked back at them we were like no that's that's the one that sort of is
gets the, the energy of the show, I think. Yeah. And I think, it, I think it's kind of interesting too, because you're walking around Edinburgh. I was there um, right before the Fringe and like, I saw this poster and it was like, oh my God, Gretchen, my sister, you have to go to this and tell me all about it. Um, but, but I imagine like handing up that flyer, like you were saying, it was, um, it could yeah. be quite subversive to just t- to give people the, the flyer and talk about like what the show was. Yeah, I, I think um, it, the image is quite, uh, well, it's clear that the show is going to be about appearance <laughs> and not, not hold back from sort of maybe the more gory details as it were. But, um, but I have to say, when I was wearing this crown whilst flying, a lot of people didn't realise it was a tampon crown. And I was like, is it a candle? Is it a cake? And I was like, Wait, no, <laughs> no it's, it's tampons, <laughs> which was <laughs> quite funny. But but yeah, I think the flyer itself was, um, people knew whether they wanted a cup or not yeah. straight away from looking at it, um, which was interesting. But yeah. That's so interesting. Wait, so, so were the people who didn't know what the tampon crown was, were they more like non-menstruators? Um, not necessarily. I think huh. some people just hadn't initially thought that it was going to be like looked that. at it well so enough. Then I think okay. It took, yeah, and, and took a while, but then that was quite nice in way because then started a conversation, and and sometimes non-menstruators as well. Um, had there were some police officers up there which I had a really lovely chat with when they finally worked out what it was. <laughs> but, oh wow, that's so interesting. I had a um, professor at drama school actually I'm a theater director in New York on my like Mm -hmm. on the other side of things um but I brought in a tampon one time and he was like a lovely gay man and he was like so fascinated by me opening the little package having the little applicator he had no idea what that was and then like how you push it up um but like fascinating that so many people don't know what this like yeah. essential item is that like I use once a month. <laughs> exactly. It's uh, well, one time my um when my brother was quite young, he borrowed my mom's bag on a school trip and he'd like offered them out thinking they were sweets. Oh um, bless him. Um this was a long, long time ago now. But um, but it is because why I mean sex education has been quite uh, lacking, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was quite interesting that after the show, some of my non-menstruating friends had been, and they were like, oh, but what's what's a cup? And what's a, and different things that I talked about in the show. And, and it was really nice that they then felt able to ask that, but they'd never seen them or, or, or could get their head around how everything worked. And it's- Oh, wow. Yeah. That's great. Really- That's kind of um, interesting. And I'm curious, like, what, what, what did you leave your audience with? What was your goal with that to like start the conversation to get non menstruators in? Or was it mostly to like bring in the menstrual crowd? That's a really great question. I think it was a bit of both. And which was, again, quite interesting because it it wasn't a, I, I think our main audience probably was people that menstruated. There's a lot of um, well, I overshare a lot of my embarrassing stories alongside the history, and it's about trying to embrace those messy parts of us and sort of work past any shame that we might feel. Um, and because we don't need, like, that's a societal problem. That's not on us. Like, that's not on us. Um, but at the same time, it was really important to me that it wasn't just people that menstruate that came because mm. that's the whole point. It's, it needs to be for everyone. And it, I very much wanted it to be everyone's included. I didn't want it to be a sort of anti those that don't menstruate kind mm-hmm. of show as well because that will just sort of make that gap even wider and I really yeah. wanted it to be like come on in everyone let's have this chat it is a bit embarrassing at times it is a bit messy but let's embrace that and and move forwards and, and start these conversations and it was really that like, it meant so much when a couple of people afterwards did say oh I feel like I can talk about this now or mm-hmm. um one of my friends who menstruates came with a colleague that does it and they had this massive conversation after the show about it and I was like yes that's exactly what I want I yeah I think I'm quite lucky that the people in my life have been quite willing to talk about it but there's mm. those that really haven't been and that's it's horrible it's it's such a huge part of our lives and it's I don't know I'm heavy and I'm pain, painful and to not be able to talk about to even just not be able to be like oh my tummy I mean, hurts acknowledge today. it yeah right it's um it's utterly bizarre that that's how yeah that, that's so strange and the fact that like 
sometimes people don't even talk to their girlfriends about it or other yeah. menstruators. I don't even want to say girlfriends, but, um, yeah. and that's, that's so strange that this like human experience isn't talked about. So thank you for opening that conversation. <laughs> oh, hopefully it will help a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So what's next for the show? Are you going to continue to develop it? Is it, is it moving forward? What are you doing with it? What do I do? It's a great question. I'm having some meetings this week with my director and the team to sort of get our heads straight post Edinburgh. But I think what we'd really like to do is make a schools tour out of it. Oh. Um, as it stands, it's a, a 14 plus ish show. There's, there's rude bits in there, but um, we'd like to develop it into uh, a, something that we could take down to schools. Um, I'd quite like to focus on sort of more community level theatre and maybe do, mm. like it'd be quite nice if we could do a workshop in a, a bunch of schools in an area and then maybe the, the adult version of the show in the local hall uh, and, and sort of awesome. scale it uh, for those many I don't yeah I think because yeah. be I think like people of all different ages need to see this show and like yeah. understand like what is menstruation and also like the cool funny history and bloody like embarrassing parts which are yeah which and, and like I think every month to me <laughs> exactly and I think that like well horrible history is what I loved and, and that I think kids are quite interested in the perhaps gloria side of things um at times but but also I started when I was nine and I didn't know what it was and a lot of people um, don't know what's happening when it starts and I think mm -hmm. that sort of sometimes we veer away from having those conversations with younger people because we're worried that we might scare them but actually it's almost worse to not have had those conversations um, mm -hmm. but yeah so it needs development for that but hopefully that's the next step fingers crossed that's what I do amazing break a leg thank you <laughs> <laughs> yes and how can we see your work if we're not based in the UK is is it possible at all so I'm working on getting a film version. We did film it up in Edinburgh um, with varying uh, quality. So I'm, I'm finishing going through that this week, but we're working on getting a venue in London that we can get a good quality sort of filmed version of it, um, which I'm not quite sure where it's going to go yet, but there will be a filmed version available to, to view. Um, it's we've got to get a few audience members in because there's audience interaction and stuff in the show spoiler um so we're working on getting that sorted and getting a really sort of good quality film version um and then that will go into the ether somewhere um, amazing but yeah so it will be possible to see if you're not in the uk um yeah it's exciting that's so cool and something that we always ask on this podcast is uh what is your definition of womanhood oh what is my definition of womanhood that is such a tricky question. Yeah. Um, I think it changes like second to second. So it's like whatever yeah. you're feeling at this particular moment this morning. I think um, I, my instinct is to say like community of sort of closeness and talking about uh, things that maybe I don't I don't know. I have a great sort of group of friends that we, we could talk about everything with and like literally everything that I wouldn't. That there's like a really nice community of sort of sharing our experiences there um but I, I, womanhood is such a broad term gosh I yeah I think I think the shared experience of of, of a community at the moment of things that we may have experienced from others but also just within ourselves if that makes any sense yeah it's like it quite does, a, it does it does yeah I just know, threw that at you <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, oh, I'm definitely gonna go away and think about that more though that's a really interesting question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Heather, what is next for you? What's next for me? This is a, a great question. Um, I am running some workshops at the moment. So I'm starting some new workshops tomorrow with older adults and creative writing and stuff. And then I've got a few projects lined up in November. I'm doing a school's tour and a short film and stuff, which is really exciting. Um, and then I think I'm hoping to sort of plan the next steps in September for, for period dramas um, I'd love to well I want to try at the school tour and I'd love to try and make sort of a, a young adult book um, about it as well I don't know cool. I'm not an author so I don't know why I've decided that that's the next step but I, I want to there's so much research that didn't get to go on the show and um, that I really want to try and get down in some capacity whether that ends up being a, sort of a blog site or a podcast or a book I'm not quite sure yet but I'd like to 
get some of that research out into the world that um that didn't make it into the show so yeah that's awesome there's so much history that we don't know about especially in terms of like women um and it just isn't talked about I mean like periods aren't talked about now but like what did they do like they just like bled out in the field like come on (laughs) there's so much more there there is actually stuff like if you did I mean some periods of history I found really difficult to research there really was uh, I found it really hard to find stuff but then like in ancient Egypt there's loads they like that stuff was so well documented and maybe it's not this is a document on periods but in documents on sort of uh, pregnancy and mm. other kinds of health um there's loads there's like so much on what they used for contraception or how to bring a period on if it was let, like there's wow. I found that fascinating that actually um that some of the further away periods have way more than you might expect and they had like great ideas that you could use menstrual blood for purifying things like there was some really uh like celebratory aspects of it so it's wow. it's really interesting how it's sort of changed over time that's so fascinating yeah I would read your book I, I'm ready for it now <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah well Heather thank you so much for being on the podcast today you're so welcome yeah. thank you for having me it's been brilliant